Amen. All right, so I'm going to be talking about my story and let's go straight into it. I wrote a book and the name of my book is I Almost Ruined My Marriage, My True Life Story. I wrote a book of how I almost ruined my marriage and one will wonder why would you do that? I've been married for over 11 years and um, last year God asked me to write a book of what I did in my marriage that would have destroyed it. You can imagine. So I started writing. And the day I finished writing that book, I went to consult for um, a company that I consult for in Port Harcourt. And when I was there, the morning I woke up from in the hotel, God told me that morning, you're going to finish this book today. There's an urgency in the spirit. This book needs to go out. So I told God that morning, I said, you know, usually when I come to Port Harcourt to work, it's usually very stressful. I wouldn't have time. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to give you time during the day. For every little moment, second you have, go back to that book and write. So as soon as I finished praying, I started writing. I went to work and I continued writing. Till midnight when I came back to the hotel I continued writing and I finished that book that day. The only thing that was remaining was my conclusion. The next day I was going back to my hair so as I was as the driver was driving me I finished everything and emailed it to the editor. So why am I saying these things? Why am I putting this before you? is to tell you that there's an urgency in the spirit for what I had written. And I have seen the impact this book has made in the lives of people. The book came out in September. In September alone, the month of September, I had sold over 5,000 copies of that book. People, people were getting it, like you say, you know what you say, high demand. And I've been hearing testimonies of what the book has done in the lives of people. Now, let me tell you my story. I'll start with Proverbs 14, verse 1. What does the Bible say? The wise woman builds her home. The foolish woman tears it down with her own uh, hands. And I said in my book, you do not need the foolish woman does not need the help of anybody to tear her home. She can do it all by herself. She can do it alone. And that was what I was. I was foolish. When you say someone is foolish, the person is unreasonable. So you're unable to see reason. You're unable to talk and come to a compromise. I couldn't see reason in marriage. And my story started from my growing up. I grew up in a family. My background was that of, I had parents that fought. I don't know if anybody here has experienced that kind of thing. So, so I said that my, my parents used to fight and I watched them growing up, you know, me and my younger ones, or my elder brother and the younger one we were three at the time and we saw our parents fight. So when our parents would fight, we cried as children. Then as we started growing up, we were now the ones that started separating them. You know, when mommy and daddy is fighting, mommy, daddy, leave mommy alone. Mommy, you know, that was what we used to do. So I grew up in that kind of family. And I did not know the impact it had on me. Why am I saying this? I'm mentioning this because as parents, for parents that are here and to be parents, whatever we are doing, we need to be careful because we are role models. Whatever you are modeling to the life of that child. Because for me, I grew up that way. And you know what? I was a fighter. I knew how to fight. Oh, I fought. Oh, I fought primary school. I will fight boy. I will fight girl. And I always like to give a mark. So I'll use my nail to show that, you know, so that you remember that we fought so that next time you won't come. In secondary school, I kept fighting up and I always used to win until my SS1. That was what made me stop fighting was that I fought one girl. Her name was Iko. After fighting her, actually, sincerely, Iko beat me that day. But the truth is that Iko won, not because of anything, but because Iko was older than me. You know, at times you're in a class with people that are like five years ahead of you. Iko's bones were strong. So Iko, so Iko was, like I said, you know, she, she beat me that day. Iko beat me well. It was after that in my sense when I said I won't fight again. But I had my mouth. My mouth was my own weapon. So I, 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 you know, I grew up like that. And please, let's be very careful because if, you're, if you have sons that are watching and they see you being beaten, let's say the fathers are beating the, the mothers, the, the boy will grow up to think it's okay to beat a woman. The girl will also grow up to think maybe it's okay to be beaten by a man. But for me, what, that, what happened to me was that my experience made me start thinking differently. And we're not too many that think differently like this. Because for me, by the age of 16, I started 
started praying about marriage. I met my husband at the age of 19. I started praying at the age of 16 and fasting because I used to tell God, God, I want a peaceful man. I don't want to go through what my parents went through. But there are some other people that if they had gone, that went through the same experience, and I'm sure some of you are sitting here, that have actually said, I will never marry. I know people that have, have talked about this, and you see someone 35 years old, and she will meet me and tell me, you know what, I, I made up my mind I will never marry, I will never marry, because of what I saw my parents do. So this had a negative impact on me, but that doesn't justify why I should become or be who I am, because most times, we think that because of our environment, the things our environment has done to us, then we should remain there. So, for me, I now got married. I married a peaceful man. If you know what it means to say a man is peaceful, my husband was peaceful. So, he came from a peaceful home. Me, I came from a home that, you know, knew how to fight. So, when we used to talk, it was difficult to have conversations because I, I like to argue. I would get angry and I, I had anger problems fiery temper. So I'll be there talking, talking, talking. My husband is trying to be calm, trying to, you know, put himself together. But me, I couldn't, you know, and at times when we talk and he gets so upset, at times my husband would just, I have made my husband cry severally. From the day we got married, you know, that honeymoon period, he was working with UN at, that, at the time. He said, okay, let us go to Abuja. He had a job to do in Abuja. I followed him to Abuja. I got to Abuja, and for some reason, only God knows, because now when I think about it, I just wonder what was controlling me. But for now, what I know is that he left me, and maybe because he did not call me on the phone. You know, women, when we, when we don't get the attention that we, we want. So I just started feeling, eh. So this man has gone to work. Throughout the day, he did not call me. He did not even ask me. And you know, we're still young then. So I did not know how to even eat or what to eat. And he did not make arrangements for me. So I'm thinking to myself, can you imagine? He left me here. He did not even think of what I will eat. Eh. So I had started uh, boiling. When my husband came back, imagine now, you know that kind of thing that you would do when you are waiting for the man to come back. Since money, you do not have work, joblessness. All you have been meditating on is what he did not do. What he did not do that did not work. So I just was waiting for him as soon as he came in. That's the first thing. Pa, 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 pa. I started talking. I complained and complained. And the poor man, I'm calling him poor, not like poor, but you know, trying to defend himself. I was trying to explain why or what God knows I did not hear anything. That's why I cannot tell you what he said. Because when you are angry, you do not hear what the person is saying. You only hear yourself. So I can give you my own side because I, could, I can remember what I was saying. And I kept talking and he kept trying to explain. I couldn't understand what my husband was trying to say. At some point, he got weak. You know when people don't know how to argue? He got weak. He just went to sit by the bedside to, you know where the phone usually stays. And the man started crying. As he started crying, I now told myself, I said, ah, I know what you have done is serious, so that means there's a problem. I now went and knelt and started begging him. But this is what I kept putting him through. Because for me, the only time there is trouble is when it's a fight. But if it does not reach fight, then there's no problem. Isn't it just talk? What is in talk? So, but you know, when someone is not used to such things, you wear the person out. You wear the person out because you are arguing and arguing and arguing. And I used to argue, eh? Oh, I used to argue that people said they wanted to sponsor me to read law. They said they wanted to sponsor me to read law. No, you know, and my husband, so imagine me marrying a man and he starts complaining that I'm arguing too much. When before I married him, someone wanted to sponsor me to read law. While I was married to him, I got another offer that they would sponsor me to read law. But you know when your arguments are nonsense, unreasonable, nonsense talk, with all the arguing I could argue, ask me if I joined debate club in school. I did not join debate club. Because you know in debate club, when you are talking, you talk with reason. You put facts and everything together. But I did not have... But my own arguments were not the type that facts and, you know, fact-based. So it's just that thing that is in my mind. That is what I want to say. And why am I mentioning this to us? Please, that people are validating your weaknesses. Do not make it right. 
that people are validating your weaknesses, it doesn't make it right. What is wrong is wrong. So for me, they were validating it, but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So I was doing something wrong, but because I had people outside telling me, it's fine, you're doing well, oh, this is a strength, you know, and I felt that way, but that doesn't make it right. And that also brings me to a lot of talk today that is going around, whether you call it women empowerment, feminism, and what have you. See, I don't have a problem with women being everything they want to be. I told you, I'm a career person. I do a lot of things. My husband has allowed me to do too many things. So I, I do a lot of things. But I still know, I still believe, and the Bible still tells me that the man is the head of the home. The man is the head. There's no compromise. No matter how much you want to rise in society, that man is still the head. Hoha is as simple as that. So please, because I have actually gone to some churches and they invite me and they are doing a woman stuff and you hear them, they will add drama where the man is now the one that is they are rolling on the ground. You see the woman now becoming the boss in there and I'm wondering where is all of this nonsense coming from? So that we, are, we should stop. There are things we are copying from the European culture that we should actually be careful what we are copying. That they are validating that, oh yes, you know you are equal, you are equal. Doesn't make it right. If you look at their homes, check them out. All the people that you keep watching on Hollywood, you have been watching them. They will act those their romantic movies and you now say, chai, and they lived happily ever after. And you'll be wondering, oh God, when will I have that kind of romantic husband as a husband? Or when will my husband become like that? check all of them check how many of them are still in their husband's house the relationships they all end up in divorce so it, they are not our role model our role model when it comes to how marriages should be structured should come from what the bible says our bible is our standard it's not what they are telling us can someone just raise her hand up and say oh lord every baggage i picked up from my family I picked up from my friends, I picked up from my environment that might likely affect my marriage or my relationship. I uproot them from my life, I uproot them from my marriage, I uproot them from my mind. Can your amen turn down? Yeah. Amen. So there was something I said in my book. I said separation between spouses now. You know when we talk about separation, I said it, it, it isn't only hinged on immorality. The seemingly little acts of anger, unkindness, wickedness, disrespect, dishonesty, lies, deception, envy, jealousy, etc. Which couples express towards each other are very strong weapons the enemy uses to break homes today. So it's no more just about, oh, immorality. Things like anger, disrespect, you know, uh, envy, jealousy, you know, bitterness. You know, these things are the things that are destroying homes now. And you now find out that they say, you see people divorce and you ask them why. Not like the man went to sleep around. Not like the woman slept around. Even English people have given us the way to call it in irreconcilable differences. What can the, the differences be that you cannot reconcile? So you see, these things are things that are eating up and these were the things that were affecting my marriage. And you know, this, this, this is why God told me to put this in writing. Another thing I did a lot, I was so disrespectful to my husband. I dishonored him. I did it in public. I did it in secret. I didn't care anywhere, anywhere. And my husband is a man of God though. I did it wherever, you know, because, and, you know, Oh God, it's now when I think about some of the things I did, I just tell myself, how, who, why, what, what, what made you do these things? Because, you know, when you're doing the wrong things, you do it with so much uh, audacity, like it is the right thing that you are doing. So I did these things and I didn't understand, you know, what I was doing. And sincerely, sincerely, it is in retrospect that I, I have actually come to realize that I had a lot of death scares in marriage. As in before, I used to have a lot of death scares. If it's not cervical cancer scare, I have had cervical cancer scare. I will have a revelation, different revelations of, you know, one thing or the other that my life is threatened or, you know, that I'm going to die. There was just something about death around me, you know, during this period. And, you know, why these things were happening is because... See, when you dishonor a man of God, there's no how God will watch you dishonor his own. Because there's a work he has put in his hand. And he does not want that work to suffer. Rather than that work suffer, it's better you, you go. 
That is God though. See, I have realized in relationship that I don't know whether you call it partial or impartial, whatever you want to call it is up to you. But when me and my husband have, have a misunderstanding and I think me, I think that he's the one that was wrong. But you know, because I didn't even have the right emotions to handle it, I will always handle it the wrong way. So at the end of the day, have you ever been in a situation when things happen? At the end of the day, it's you that they tell to say sorry. You are the one apologizing when if you look at the root of the problem, it's not you that started the problem, but it's you that end up apologizing. Because most times you, you, you blew it out of proportion. You didn't handle it well. So it now falls back to the woman to apologize. But that was what was to happen to me. And mine was funny in the sense, funny, but very, very, very destructive in the sense that when things like this will happen, it will be maybe a man of God from somewhere or a woman of God from somewhere that will just come and say God is very upset with you this thing that she does she understand what she has just done now and I'm telling and I'm asking God because in my mind I'm thinking God are we not all your children this man also offended me but that's not what God is looking at his work must move forward and nobody anybody that wants to stand in the way God will remove simple so this there were scares I had in marriage you know that now now see sincerely I have learnt honor I have learnt respect if you see if you see the way I respect my husband you will not know he's still the same person that's telling as in it's a it's a it's a too complete it's called the extreme they are now in the extremes I am the woman that we call my husband sir I don't know about you. The other day I saw on Facebook someone was saying, how can you call your husband, sir? Uh, okay, when you are in, with him in together, will you be calling him, sir? I don't know what kind of nonsense talk that is. Because even the Bible we read, the Bible says that even Sarah called her husband, Lord. So I don't know why, you know, today we think that uh, we cannot show that respect. We will continue to do babe and honey and sweet. I'm not saying don't babe him, oh, babe. But see, every man loves respect. Every man loves honor. That is, it's like it's their food. It's more than any other thing. Men are egoistic. They have their ego. If you look at your younger brother, you will understand what I am saying. I can remember some years ago, then I was still in London. My younger brother came around, then he was coming to study. I can't remember what happened, and I said something. And he told me that, sit, that I shouldn't talk to him like that. As in, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, see this small boy, you, that we all grew up together. Now he's not telling me, don't talk to me like that. That he had not even married. Now that he has married, it will be something else. So, so, you know, but every man, they have been wired that way. And the question that I want to, to throw at you is that as a woman, your own husband, or maybe a, your fiancé, do you know the language of respect? Do you know his language of respect? Because every man has their own language. You cannot go and meet, uh, see the way your friend is treating her own husband and go to your own home and say that is how you will treat your own husband. Because the way she does has may not be the way your husband wants it. So it's something for us to go back home and start asking our husbands, how do you want us to talk to you? I say, how do you want me to talk to you? What is respect? What, what, what will I do that will show respect for you, as in to you? So these are questions that we need to start asking ourselves. Because a lot of times the men keep complaining, the women, they don't respect me, she doesn't respect respect me and each time we as women we keep saying oh, but I'm respecting you I respect you you know that's what I used to battle with my husband he would say I'm not respecting me I would say I'm respecting he would say I'm not respecting I say I'm respecting so okay so where is the confusion now if I say I'm respecting him he's talking to me I get so upset I walk out on him and I bang the door is that respect that's not respect but still I'll still be saying I'm respecting him but I did such things to him he'll be talking to me I'll do like this you know there's this thing I don't know if it's Igbo people that do it I don't know if it's everybody there's something we do with our nose if you can see me when you push when you push your nose up you know uh -huh. so the person will talk to you like mm, you know oh that thing used to pain my husband chai I will do the thing thing will just pain him eh? pepe him pepe him and he will start complaining and I'm like no no this thing I did with my nose it doesn't really mean anything it just it <laughs> That is me trying to explain away what I have done. But no matter what I personally would have thought it meant to me, as far as he doesn't like it, then I should stop doing it. I should stop it. So I had to learn how to stop, you know, doing my nose. At times it was difficult initially because I had gotten used to it. So I, I, I apologized earlier. That's in my journey in change. I apologized. I would have apologized earlier and said, see, I'm sorry if I do that my nose thing. Please, I'm changing. I'm changing. So if my nose does like this and I, I say, sorry, 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 sorry. It's, you know. 
And my husband then will tell me, if I say sorry, he will tell me that that sorry is not from my heart. How do you know the sorry that is from the heart and the one that is not from the heart? But there's a way to know the one that is from the heart. You, I, I know you know the one that is from the heart. You know, there are stories we tell men just because we just want that thing to end. But not like we really are sorry about it. So whenever I tell him sorry, and re- sincerely, because I was very troublesome, I was stubborn. I was a stubborn woman. God, for, God forgive me. I was a stubborn woman. And, you know, because I was that way, so when I just see things are now getting bad, I will now say sorry. You know, and when I say the sorry, you know, he will now say, this sorry is not from your heart. So I had to learn how to say the one that was from my heart. So I, I started thinking, how will I show that sorry is from my heart? And for me, I said, okay, I have to feel that thing. And because I was also an independent woman, I had worked so much. I, you know, when you're independent, you do. So, and my husband used to complain then that I was too independent, you know, and I couldn't understand what he meant by being too independent. So, one thing that will show him that I'm sorry, the way that he will know that I am broken, is if I kneel down. If my knees touch the ground, he will know that this thing has entered. So, if I want to prove to him that I'm sorry, I will just kneel down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you know, this journey was a long journey for me because... You see, these things I'm saying now, we are laughing, but the thing was a strain on my marriage. My marriage was breaking. We will go out, people will see us, they'll think everything is fine. But inside, you know when you, two people start living like strangers? You're just living with somebody, you don't talk to the person, you don't really have much to say. We're living like strangers. And it was so bad. And you know, the, the problem of our emotions, most times as females, we keep saying our emotion, we are emotional people, we, we you know, who, who here does mood swing? Um, I, my mood. You know, you may wake up in the morning now. Thank you for raising your hand. You know, you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, this is the way I'm feeling. See, that thing is not from God. Mood swings are not from God. There's nothing science will tell me that I will agree that it's from God. Do you know why I will tell you that? If you wake up in the morning and you are feeling like, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you just feel like, um, I'm, I'm not just happy today. I don't want to talk to anybody. And you move about that way, or you just lie in bed. Anybody that greets you, you don't answer. You know, I, I don't know. Has anybody woken, woken up feeling that way? You just don't feel like talking. Okay, I have a lot of yeses. Then let's say you're just sitting down, and you're, you just got an alert on your phone. 50 million hits your account. Please, how will you feel? Will you still lie on the bed? No, you should still, won't you, you won't still lie on the Won't you jump up? That's the way you'll be greeting good morning that day. Even people will be asking you what is good about the morning. You will give people testimony. You will dance. You will shout. So how come just that one thing has been able to change that mood that you think? So we are in control of our feelings. We are in control. We are in control. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I am in control of my feelings. Tell your neighbor, no, say it very loud because we are women and every time we just keep giving that excuse about emotion. Tell your neighbor, I'm in control of my feelings. I'm in control of my emotion. My emotion does not rule me. My feelings do not rule me. I'm the one that is in control. If you know that from today you are going to be in control and that even if someone offends you, you will decide that you won't get offended. Even if it's your husband, your fiance that decides to upset you, you decide that you will not get upset. Can your amen turn that? So, you know, most times, maybe you may say eh, that me, I'm a baby because my own, my own case is different from your own. My husband, if you know, he cheats. My husband cheats and that's why, see, see, women, there, there are too many things we have talked about that we shouldn't be talking about. There are a lot of things we need to be doing with our knees in the place of prayer. What helped me was that I learned how to start praying. Prayer is what helped me even change. This change I'm talking about that I have changed now. It is prayer that helped me to get here. There are things that you don't need to talk about. And you know, then my husband always tell me, if I do something to you, God reports me to God. I hear God. God will talk to me. You don't have to come and start trying to do confront and fight and mm -mm. report me to God. You can report your husbands to God. You can make your husbands do what you... See, the women that control their husbands are women that know how to pray. If you kneel down now, your husband is cheating. Go and carry that your ring. You see the ring that you use in joining. Come to the altar and begin to speak concerning... You know the commitment that both of you have. Speak on the altar. There's no how. That woman will run. 
You will drive that. You don't need to come and start, eh, let me see your phone. Let us check. Who, who is she? No. Go and address it in a place of prayer. If he refuse to give you money, in the night, as you are lying down, take style, hug him. As you are hugging him, he'll think it's just hug. You are commanding him to release money. You say, I command you in the name of Jesus. You will give me money. You will give me money. The man will just think that you are just touching him. He does not know that you are praying him to do what you... See, we need to start praying. We are not praying enough. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, we need to start praying. Tell your neighbor, you can get anything you want from the place of prayer. We complain too much. Let's stop complaining. For me, there was a lot of separation that happened. And you know what, 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 what uh, my husband used to tell me then? He would say, I'm not a light bulb. You can't switch me on and switch me off at will. What does that mean? You know, when you offend somebody, just in case there's anybody like me here, that you do, 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 then you say sorry. And the person, when the person doesn't forgive you, it's not like the person hasn't forgiven you, but the person is still being very quiet. You know, that's aren't you a child of God. You will not forgive. And you know, the person will not tell you even myself i used to forgive like me i will always say i forgive fast you know it's easy for people like us that cause problems to forgive fast it's very easy for us but you forget that the person that you are doing the bad to it can't be that easy because as the person is trying to recover from what you have done you do another one so that's why he used to tell me i'm not a bulb i'm not a light bulb you know as i'm trying to recover you will hit me again as i'm trying to recover you hit me again my marriage suffered my marriage really 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 went down as in that the only thing that kept us my husband would just tell me is that you know he just kept praying and he always used to see the bigger picture god always used to show him the picture of who i was going to be you know so he'll always see that picture and he'll just tell himself well you know they, there's there's something in this and he kept praying and most times when i did the things i did to him he will always tell me as you are doing it i'm praying and i'm rebuking that spirit that is talking through you because he knows that it's eh. see we need to understand that marriage is very spiritual is very spiritual it's not a physical thing it's, a, it's very spiritual so and there's a mandate when god brings a man and a woman together there's an assignment on their life there's something god has brought them together to accomplish on earth so most times the devil gets us distracted with all these problems that we begin to lose sight of what the bigger picture is the assignment god has placed on our life and until the time i started understanding what the assignment was for my marriage that was when things started to take shape things started to change because you know what i have resolved in my heart i have allowed the devil to play too much with my marriage i allowed the devil to use me as a tool in his hands i have resolved as you see me here i resolved that i will love my husband like i have never loved before whether he does me good or he does me bad i will show him so much love women we need to learn how to start showing our men love the way you want your home to be, it's up to you. You, you will agree with me that if, if you decide that today there will be peace in the home, there will be peace. If you decide a woman, if a woman decides today there will be war, there will be war. We have, that's why the Bible says, like I started from the beginning, a wise woman does what? She builds. Because if you decide to build, even if the man upsets you, you can be upset, but you don't have to show you're upset. Go and tell God in prayers. Then make him a beautiful meal to eat. Whether there's a girl, or it's not, it's not, it's not important. What's the important is that God, you have put the matter before God. Make a beautiful meal. Let him come home and eat. Don't fight him. Let's stop fighting these things. The enemy is using us as tools. It's high time that we wake up and arise. If we are going to take our place in destiny, there has to be a balance. We can't take our place in career while our home is breaking apart. We cannot take our place in business while another area is suffering. Everything has to work. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, everything has to work. Can you say it louder? Everything has to work. God bless you. Can we just raise our hands? If there's anybody that has actually been through, maybe you, you're in a kind of, you know, the kind of thing that I just talked about now, your relationship. It may not be you, it may be your spouse. Just raise your hand. Let me just release a word of prayer over that relationship. The same God that did it for me. If you see my marriage now, my marriage, as far as I'm concerned, is a heaven on earth. I'm enjoying marriage. And this is something the devil had denied me of all this while. Yes, I can see some hands up. Just raise your hands. If you know that you're going through such in your own marriage, it could be you that's the problem or it may be your spouse.
spouse. Today, I'll just make a declaration. Today, I want to pray for you. And I decree over your relationship. Anyone going through an attack, whether it's in marriage or in your relationship, that whether your marriage has gone bad or the relationship has gone bad or is about to go bad, today, I decree restoration. I decree restoration. And I pray for the same grace that God has given me to be the best wife that I can be. I pray for that same grace upon your life. May you be the best in your own home. May you be, the, whether it's your spouse that needs it, I release the same prayer that God will help you in the name of Jesus. If you know that you're receiving help from God now, can that amen turn that? Amen. God bless you.